Uh, yes, sir, we are live now. Please go ahead. Good morning, Namaskar, and welcome everyone to another edition of webinars in the series Illness to Wellness. We've been organizing these webinars since past two years, and we've been focusing on different topics uh, related to your health, your wellness, and how to increase longev longevity, how to build up your immune system, how to keep away from diseases. And uh, SHM has been instrumental in organizing these webinars and in, uh, inviting staff faculties from all over the country who are well known in the country and abroad and who've been answering your questions and guiding you on your path to wellness to be away from illness. So welcome once again. Today's topic is skin care and treatments. It is very important and very vital as we all know that skin is very important to you, to us, to all of us. Skin is the first thing that you see. And this is something which give you, gives you the first impression about anyone. We as a doctor look at the skin very carefully because indeed it is said that skin is the mirror into a person's health so to a very great extent that is true it tells us a lot about the person about the health so we are going to discuss all these things uh, all these questions and aspects with our staff faculties who are very well known not only in delhi they're also from other parts of the country and our uh, our esteemed guest today so to start the session, I would request uh, uh, Sri Anil Rajput sir, who's the chairman of the CSR committee of SHM, who's uh, the brain behind these webinars, this initiative, and who's been with us throughout this journey of illness to wellness from day one, not only these webinars, but uh, the physical programs and camps which have been organized by SHM. So, uh, good morning and welcome, sir. Uh, I'm handing the podium over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kesri. Um, thank you, Dr. Batra, for joining us uh, this morning. Uh, good Thank morning. And, good morning and a warm welcome to the webinar <laughs> on skin care and treatment organized by SHM under the Illness to Wellness campaign. It gives me immense pleasure to share that since the inception of this campaign, it has received an enthusiastic support of doctors and healthcare professionals. I take this opportunity to thank each and every one of them for their continued support in this endeavor that not only raises awareness on various health issues, but also promotes healthy living and wellness through holistic measures. Today's webinar, today's webinar is centered around the largest and a vital sense organ, the skin. An average adult carries some 3.6 kilograms and 22 square feet of it. This fleshy covering does a lot more than make us look presented, presentable. Skin acts as a waterproof, insulating shield, guarding the body against extremes of temperature, harmful UV rays and chemicals. It also exudes antibacterial substance that prevent infection and manufactures vitamin D for converting calcium into healthy bones. Skin, additionally, is a huge sensor packed with nerves for keeping the brain in touch with the outside world. At the same time, it allows us free movement, thus proving itself an amazing versatile organ. While it has many roles in the maintenance of life and health, this complex and diverse sense organ has many potential problems as well. With over 3,000 possible skin disorders, skin conditions contribute 
1.79% of the global burden of disease worldwide. Skin disorders vary greatly in symptoms and severity. They can be temporary or permanent and may be painless or painful. Some have situational causes, while others may be genetic. Some skin conditions are minor, while others can be life-threatening. Common skin diseases include dry skin, discolored skin patches, peeling skin, open ulcer, rashes, and so on while acne, eczema are common skin problems. The skin perhaps, like no other organ, demands so much attention in both states of disease and health. At the outset, having good skin means proper maintenance to help it reach its full potential. Additionally, having a proper skin care is essential to help slow down the harmful effect of time. Skin care is hardly a new phenomenon. Records show complex multi-step skin care regimes dating back to thousands of years. The first recorded proof of skin care regime was found in Egypt in 3000 BCE. Natural and essential oils made from herbs and plants were used to address skin care concerns of all time. The medieval era was also about pungent herbal remedies and ointments based on animal fats. During the Renaissance, people relied on easily accessible remedies like oatmeal boiled in vinegar to banish breakouts. In the 1800, exercise and cleanliness became more important to society than ever before. And this marked the beginning of mass produced skincare products. Skincare as we know it today emerged in 1900. It has now advanced significantly with the development of new products featuring cutting edge ingredients that aim to improve the look and feel of skin. Skincare is the range of practices that not only enhances its appearance and also relieves skin conditions for which both medical and cosmetic treatments are available. In addition to this, having good nutrition with plenty of water, maintaining a healthy lifestyle with adequate sleep, managing stress, avoidance of excessive sun exposure, appropriate use of emollients, and practicing good hygiene are extremely vital to keep skin healthy and skin-related ailments at bay. Taking good care of your skin is important for more than just your appearance. Your skin is essential to your general health. If you take care of it, it can help take care of you. I'm sure that medical specialists with us today who are highly proficient in this subject and have an in-depth understanding of this topic will agree with me. Without further delay, I welcome them once again and look forward to hearing their expert views on this subject. I wish this webinar a great success and thank you very much, Jai Hind. Back to you, Dr. Kesri. You're on mute. Thank you so much, sir, for such an elaborate introduction to this topic. Uh, definitely skin is a, is a very vital and a very big organ and it has so many different functions which uh, may be related to so many different diseases as well. So I think we have a lot to talk about our skin and how to care for it. 
and definitely one hour is not sufficient. So we'll quickly uh, once again welcome our panelists. Some of them have uh, joined, but technically we can't see them. But I'm sure we are going to. They're going to be with us shortly. Uh, Dr. Rohit Batra, uh, I'd like to ask you to comment on this line that skin is the mirror of the health. Is it true? And if true, then what would you like to say about it? See, very much it is true that skin uh, is the mirror of your health. Whatever is there inside the body, it shows on your skin. So uh, you, whenever you meet your friend or family member, and if they are not well, skin or the face is the first thing, and you see them and say, hey, why are you looking so weak today? Are you well? So even a layman comes to know that uh, whether uh, you are in pink of health or whether you are suffering from any condition, you have lost weight, so the skin will sag. If uh, you are not well, if you are anemic, uh, that you're not taking proper nutrition, your skin will go pale. Uh, if uh, there is some hormonal abnormalities, say thyroid disorders, you will lose your eyebrows. And um, we have seen that what happened in Corona that post corona many patients uh, experience excessive hair loss after two months of uh, suffering from corona so they were suffering from what we call as telogen effluvium so many a times just by looking at the patient even a normal person can make out that they are not in the best of the health and of course as doctors like you and me uh, going by whatever signs we see on the face and body we come to know that the patient is not doing well. Definitely, that's very true. You know that uh, the first look that we have at anyone is the skin. And now we used to, we understand what is normal, what is abnormal. At times we may not understand the intricacies, but we understand looking at the person, that the person is healthy or sick or sick. So uh, I request you to continue on that note. And uh, Let's discuss some common diseases that even a lay person could identify uh, and, uh, and 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 you know point out that yes uh, this person is suffering from a disease or not. Uh, for example, are there any signs of uh, lifestyle disease? Let's start with high cholesterol. So, are there any signs of the face or hands or skin anywhere? which can be noticed by even a non-medical, a non-doctor non person. And uh, would you please elaborate on that? See, a lifestyle diseases we call as the metabolic syndrome. Now, in metabolic syndrome, if you are not eating well, if you are eating a lot of junk, if you are not exercising, uh, you are not taking proper care, proper sleep, then uh, people start getting various sort of skin conditions which show that they are suffering from what we call as metabolic syndrome, that the triglyceride levels are high, the uh, glycemic index is high. So uh, we get few investigations also to see whether they are suffering from diabetes or not. The first thing, if you are suffering uh, from high cholesterol level, is you will de start developing xanthomas. Xanthomas are oranges discoloration deposits on the medial canthus that's near your eyes on the upper uh, upper eyelid. Of course, it can occur in the lower eyelid as well as on the lateral side also. So all four corners uh, around the eye, the eyelids, you can develop tiny little bumps which are orangish in color and they are not itchy. They don't pose any hazard as far as, as the skin is concerned or there is uh, no scaling, no discharge, but people complain of a cosmetic problem that they are having orangish deposits on these areas. So this suggests that the cholesterol levels are high and that is why they are developing this. Another very common condition that uh, develops uh, when the patient is not maintaining a proper lifestyle is acanthosis. Acanthosis is something that the folds of the body, when you talk about folds, neck is a fold, underarm is a fold, your uh, groin, crural area is a fold, these start turning thick and dark. And many a times people feel that it is nothing else but tanning or it is because of some dirt, dust, etc. that they have not been cleaning it properly and they start rubbing. Now, it is not dirt, dust 
or anything else, but it is because of the excessive weight, the metabolic syndrome, that is your skin is getting thick and dark. And if you scrub it, rub it, or you apply all sorts of detang solutions, it will further deteriorate the condition. So acanthus is nitricans. Now it has been seen that post COVID because children were not playing, not going out. So there was no outdoor activity. So obesity has increased like anything post COVID. And even in children of as uh, less as seven to eight years of age, those who are obese, they are uh, having weight more uh, than uh, what is recommended for their height and age are developing acanthosis. Of course, at a, a later age, if you are not doing proper exercise, if you are eating a lot of junk, uh, then also if you are putting on weight, these things can develop. So xanthoma is one, acanthus is nigricans is another one. Of course, if you are not taking proper nutrition in the sense, if you are not taking proper fruits, vegetables, the mineral content, the vitamins are less in your body, then also you will see various vitamin deficiencies. If you are having anemia, that is the hemoglobin is low, you are not uh, able to do your work, you get uh, tired very easily. Simple thing is your dermatologist or doctor will see your nails. There is something known as spooning of nails that occurs if you are having uh, iron deficiency in your body. If you are having, as I told earlier, also any thyroid imbalance, then it affects your hair, it affects the eyebrows, the scalp hair, and at times even the body hair also. People who are suffering from any sort of deficiency when it comes to vitamin B and C might develop geographic tongue or swollen gums. So all these things are a part of metabolic syndrome and lifestyle disorders, nutritional uh, deficiency disorders, which your dermatologist can easily pick out as soon as he or she examines the patient. Thank you. Thank you. I would just like to add one thing here that uh, as you uh, very rightly mentioned about uh, the uh, about the metabolic disorders about I mean, the lifestyle I mean, diseases yeah. and specifically uh, the cholesterol deposits. There's a condition called familial hypercholesterolemia in which such deposits are visible not only in the eyes, uh, over the eyes as you were saying, but also on the hands, on the knees okay. and on the elbows. And uh, at times parents might see this on uh, in the children because these are visible even at early age. And it is very important because this is very diagnostic of this particular disease. This is a, a so, so to say, a, a genetically predisposed condition. And if children are not treated in time with the medications to decrease cholesterol levels, they may suffer from heart attacks at very early age. And this too is one of the reasons for young people suffering from heart attacks or at a very young age that we've been listening in, in TV and and, and in media. So skin is so vital and so important in prevention of many diseases. This is why I particularly chose these questions to highlight the importance of skin and uh, the very, very small aspects of uh, skin. As Dr. Pratra has just mentioned about the dark coloration and thickening of the skin, the acanthosis. Many times uh, I have seen, because I'm a di diabetologist, people come to me with diabetes, that they have these problems and they have been treating themselves with some over-the-counter uh, ointments, creams, but they actually have never realized the extent and the depth of the problem and that lies very deep within, that is the high insulin levels, their obesity. Once you control them, many of these diseases, uh, many of these symptoms or signs, they dissolved by themselves without the need of any cosmetic treatment. So we are definitely going to come over to uh, various aspects of skin care. But first, we, uh, our audience, I would like them to understand the importance of disease conditions, which may by themselves resolve and uh, which may make you look once again healthy and, and give you a shining skin. 
once uh, the underlying conditions have been resolved. So I see here that Dr. Manju has joined us. Welcome, Dr. Manju. Can you hear me? Please unmute yourself. Can you hear me, Dr. Manju? Dr. Manju, can you hear me? I think there's some technical problem. We still can't hear her. So uh, I would request uh, uh, Dr. Batra, you to uh, elaborate a little bit on the disorders or, or the signs that we see during pregnancy. Are there any changes in the skin in the, during pregnancy? Because uh, pregnancy is a time when the skin undergoes a lot of stretching and how would you re how would you advise our pregnant females who might be watching our program to take care of their skin so as uh, to have a healthy and uh, a balanced skin after their delivery is there anything special that should be advised to them see uh, pregnancy is a very important time for a female uh, during her life and it takes a toll uh, physically mentally and emotionally uh, for the female. And during that part, apart from taking care of the kid, uh, the pregnant female also, uh, because of the weight is uh, very much disturbed at times and a lot many emotional and mental things are going on uh, in their mind. Stretch marks, we all know is one of the commonest because uh, the body uh, size is increasing because of pregnancy. So stretch marks uh, will definitely come. Now, stretch marks in pregnancy not only occur uh, on the abdomen, but also on the thighs, on arms, shoulders, back, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, one can only help to a certain extent that if you moisturize properly something that contains ceramide, something a moisturizer that contains vitamin E is going to prevent stretch marks to a certain extent they cannot stop stretch marks from occurring because the skin is expanding at a very fast pace if you keep it moisturized then the chances that the stretch marks don't become very wide is the only thing that we can help with as far as the hair is concerned that's a good part that is during the pregnancy the hair's uh, fall decreases a lot and many a times uh, females are happy that okay they're ha having double the volume of your hair during pregnancy but the nightmare starts after three months of delivery when they undergo a, a telogen gravidarum that is what we call this extensive shedding of the hair post pregnancy now i usually uh, tell uh, my uh, patients who are coming after uh, delivering the child is and those who are suffering uh, from a lot of hair fall these many hair can only come in your next pregnancy these were the hair that was there because of the hormonal imbalance you can say or hormonal surge that took place in the body and because of that you got double the amount of hair of course that will go on a fall after you have delivered three months after that but of course whatever hair you had prior to getting pregnant we will be able to save those so no need to worry so for those things we uh, tell them to take proper nutrition and uh, many a times nowadays because of the uh, patients who are hooked on to their social media they start applying various things on their scalp so i would like our viewers to make a note that all these medicines that contain minoxidil etc are not to be used during pregnancy or even even while uh, you are feeding the females are feeding so we can give peptides that are protein molecules to take care of such things we can give tinctures that are available in the market uh, in case of telogen gravidarum but during pregnancy there is hardly any need as far as the hair is concerned of course hair and nail supplements are the same so if you are having thin nails then your gynecologist or dermatologist will definitely prescribe you some vitamins to take care of these things because nutritional requirement during pregnancy is not only for one's body but for the child's body also so the nutritional requirement increases take a lot of green leafy vegetables take fruits 
I ask my patients to take a different color fruit every day because no fruit has the complete is a complete packet that it contains all the vitamins and minerals. So maybe a green fruit on a one a one day on Monday, a yellow on Tuesday, a red on Wednesday, and so on. So every fruit will provide some sort of vitamins and minerals that will take care. As far as the hair is concerned, and during pregnancy. Uh, Iron is uh, uh, required in good quantity. So iron supplementation, most of the gynecologists already give. And a small thing that they can do at, in, in their home is start cooking in iron utensils. That also we have seen helps. So at home, because many times people say, Dr. Saab, we want something that we can do at home. We don't want any more uh, artificial supplements. So proper diet and something that you can do at, in your home uh, as far as iron is concerned is that you can start cooking in iron vessels that is also good compared to what non uh, uh, sticky uh, vessels nowadays we have in our families uh, at, apart from stretch marks and hair and nail many a times a female will start getting itchy bumps on their body starting third to fourth month of pregnancy we call it Pregnancy induced purpura or uh, uh, or PUPPP that is various itchy plaques uh, rash develop on body to start with usually from the abdomen and it can spread to legs and arms also. We get a liver function test done to see that the, uh, the, the liver is functioning properly. In such a scenario, if it is something uh, that's going wrong because of the hemodynamic state that the pregnancy is there, so we take care of the liver. If the bile is raised, if uh, there is some problem, we give some medication. Otherwise, we give topical moisturizer and at times topical steroidal creams to take care of the itching. We prevent uh, or uh, we are uh, reluctant in giving some oral medication uh, to the pregnant female. But of course, if the itching is severe, then we give those which can be prescribed during pregnancy, which have been seen that are safe in pregnancy to take care of the itching that occurs starting from third to fourth month of pregnancy and which at times subsides on its own once the baby is delivered. So these are the common things that occur during pregnancy and uh, we see such uh, cases in our day-to-day -day practice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Manju, can you hear us? Dr. Manju? Uh, we can't hear you. Are, you. are you sure your mic is connected? Maybe you can connect with an ear. Uh, yes, to unmute, I think. No, she's she doesn't seem to be muted. Uh, we can't hear you, Dr. Mandel. Hello? Okay, uh, so we'll switch over to you, Dr. Patra. Uh, uh, now, maybe, since maybe. you were talking about hair, you know, hair fall is a very, very common issue. It, happen it occurs not only in pregnancy, it occurs in males, it is there with me. And you get so many, especially young girls uh, who are worried about the hair loss. So uh, people sometimes complain that they have bouts of hair loss. Suddenly they start losing hair and they can see a bunch of hair while after shower. So people get very worried. First of all, is it something to be, uh, is it something very worrisome? People should be worried about it. Why does it happen in usually healthy males and females? See, you have to understand that hair fall, otherwise 100 hair falling every day is normal. Be it a male, female, child, but it comes back. The problem starts when there is any hormonal abnormality or there is some nutritional deficiency or you have undergone a stress. There are various sort of hair loss. Uh, the commonest sort of hair loss in males is the male pattern baldness, which uh, Mr. Rajput, me, and to some extent, you are also suffering from. Now, this runs in our genes, so you cannot fight your genes. So, starting uh, at 17 to 18 years of age, a male who has history, a family history of hair loss, that is androgenic alopecia, that is the male pattern baldness, 
whenever the hair is falling, it is not coming back. So if 100 hair are falling, only 40, 50 are coming back. So the hairline starts to recede. Uh, with your permission, I can show because I had, if you can see this thing, is it visible? Keshri, is it visible? Yes. Yeah. So this is a male pattern characteristic hair fall where you see a normal male at 18 years of age will first start to lose from the hairline and eventually the hairline will recede and then they will start losing from the crown area and eventually both of them will merge with each other and you are left with total loss of hair from the whole of the crown. So this is known as male pattern baldness which runs in families and the only thing that we can do is you have to take medicine till the time you want hair. So I started late because medicines were not available so I was not able to contain that much but in my family all my other cousins are making use of the medicines that are available so they are having a bounce. In females it is different. Of course, there is female pattern hair loss that is different. It also runs in families. Male pattern runs from male to male that is from grandfather to father to uh, son and in females from nanima to daughter and uh, uh, to mother and daughter. In this, it usually starts in 30s. You see crown losing the volume of hair. Uh, females who do central parting will see that the uh, parting is getting more and more widened and they are losing the bounds that used to have. This is known as female pattern hair loss. Again, medicines need to be continued if they want to contain hair. Otherwise, the dictum is females never go bald. It's only males who uh, go bald. But of course, females want more hair. So, in them also the medicine needs to be continued. Coming on to the seasonal variation, the hair cycle goes through anagen that is the growing phase, catagen that is the resting phase and telogen that is the falling phase. So the hair goes through this cycle. So first it eats, grows, sleeps and then falls away. So when a patient is under the telogen phase, Yes, we can hear. So when the hair, most of the hair are in telogen phase, that is the time when a male or female will see uh, complain that they are suffering from excessive hair loss. Most of the time it occurs in Indian context during the monsoon time. So in monsoon time, many patients come and say, as soon as the monsoon start, we start uh, losing hair. So no need to worry. We just give them few supplements. We give them few peptides to make sure that this falling phase is taken care of and they again the hair goes into the anagen phase That's and it starts better. to grow. So this, if you are suffering from a condition where there is excessive weight loss, people who die, people who go nowadays on intermittent fasting or those who are suffering from like typhoid, jaundice, corona, dengue, chikungunya, because of the toll on their body, because of the excessive stress on their body, they lose hair after recovering from these disease after two months. That is known as telogen effluvium. Another uh, sort of hair fall, if you say, which people get worried because the hair fall is just uh, overnight, it is alopecia areata, where you develop patches of hair just like points of a, a skin that are seen overnight because the hair falls all of a sudden because of a shocker that is known as alopecia areata where you develop uh, areas devoid of hair completely. This is an autoimmune condition where we give some medicines or at times inject uh, intralegion steroids to bring back the hair. People who are suffering from other autoimmune conditions like thyroid, or other conditions are more prone to get alopecia areata. Males might develop patches in their beard also and at times when the whole body gets devoid of hair, we call it alopecia uh, areata universalis. So these are the types 
ऑफ हेयर लॉस ठीक है तो स्टार्ट दीजिए हो गया मेरा टाइम यू आर ऑन म्यूट सर डॉक्टर केसी यू आर ऑन म्यूट Thank you so much, Dr. Badra. You so so beautifully and so elaborately uh, describe the the growth of the hair and the various reasons by which we we might be losing the hairs. Even though I would personally say that it was not very encouraging for me, I thought rather you'll give some uh, some suggestions or something so that I could at least regrow some of my hairs. But alas. whatever yes. a person a male has lost in last 6 months only that can be regrown so whatever you have lost in 2022 medicines can help you regain that only then i have a grudge with uh, rajput sir he should have started these programs at least 20 years back <laughs> okay rok manju uh, manju finally we have you with us so quickly if i if i can request you tell us some uh, some common signs of the skin especially the face uh, like the spots on the face like um, uh, which may be associated with internal diseases autoimmune disorders which may have some, a very deep effect on the health state of the body just quickly okay there are many diseases which uh, affect our skin and mostly if they come over the face the person be concerned if they are not on face okay they come for treatment but theek hai ha treatment le lete hain but if the rash or anything comes over the face it becomes concern for the patients such as uh, in sle the rash come over the face in other like liver diseases some red marks over the skin and the uh, Like these uh, lichen planus, many diseases which affects the skin. So whenever uh, the internal disease or systemic diseases they affect the skin, the patients come. So the uh, it becomes responsibility of us as a physician first to diagnose properly, then only to proceed for the treatment. Obviously, if the rash is only because of some other reasons if some application or any cosmetic procedure then the treatment is different but if the rash is because of systemic illness then the approach and treatment is completely different so first we have to establish the diagnosis because of what reason it is if it is because of some application some cosmetic problem or transitory or allergy then the treatment is very easy by four five days becomes patient becomes fine With the treatment and goes on, but if it is because of systemic illness, like uh, uh, or any other systemic problems, then it becomes responsibility of us to establish the diagnosis and proceed for the treatment and take the other specialty for the uh, proper diagnosis and treatment. So we first establish the diagnosis with the investigation and the uh, biopsy, skin biopsy. It becomes priority of us. If we get a skin biopsy, establish the diagnosis, then we take some other investigation, uh, like uh, what are the organs involved. Then we refer the patients to other specialties, like systemic. If it is systemic sclerosis, the skin becomes hard. Then we take a biopsy, establish the uh, diagnosis. Then we uh, investigate the patient, uh, diagnose about the internal other organs involvement. Then we refer the patient to other specialties. So like Thank this, you. we should proceed. Thank you, Dr. Manju. Thanks. Dr. Roy, over to you. Uh, we've just had a question, and that's one thing I wanted to ask you uh, next was, tell us about warts because people get different types of warts: big ones, small ones, ones with hair. What is their significance, and uh, which ones are really harmful, which should be taken care of? And I heard that there there's some warts which can later on become cancerous. So please tell us about all this. See, warts are viral infections. Warts are of different types. The uh, we have Verruca vulgaris. Vulgaris means common. So the commonest types of warts are Verruca vulgaris, which you see uh, at various uh, body parts. Usually, it uh, resembles a cauliflower. Uh, the if you see the surface, it is it resembles a cauliflower. So it is rugged. Okay, and warts are contagious. contagious in the sense they pass from one to another most of the times you will see warts in males and females on face the verruca vulgaris because it usually comes from salon your barber 
your beauty parlor because they uh, make uh, use of the same things and because they don't uh, may, uh, maintain hygiene as we uh, maintain in our clinics or in our hospitals uh, for various patients. Now, wards of other types are veruca plana that are the flat top wards. They are usually seen in children. Again, as I told you, all wards are contagious, so they can uh, pass from one to another. Usually occurs in children um, uh, playing together in the school, etc. Then comes the periangal or plantar wards. These are the wards which occurs on your fingers and toes. On the plantar wards are usually seen on the plantar surface uh, of the uh, of your foot. They usually occur. If you go barefoot to places like uh, mandirs, gurudwaras, etc., and if you are uh, wearing footwear, you have common footwear, someone is uh, suffering from warts and you use the same footwear, so again it is contagious. So all warts are contagious. These are the common warts. The fourth type of warts are the genital warts. Genital warts are sexually transmitted. They usually occur on the genital area of males and females. These are the ones which might turn cancerous at a later date, depending upon their. We have to see what uh, type of uh, genital warts are there. So, we do uh, phenotyping at uh, times, uh, uh, especially in females. Uh, this can turn cancerous. The chances occurring uh, of cancer occurring in males is less. If someone is suffering uh, from genital warts nowadays as a protective mechanism. We ask them to uh, take the uh, vaccines that are available for genital warts. Uh, of course, uh, the current guideline is that in females, at, at least uh, the vaccine should be given even if they're not suffering from genital warts. And usually during their teens, this vaccine is given. Uh, you are on mute, sir, Dr. Rajesh. Once the wart is there, there are hardly any medicines that can take care of the warts. Of course, plain warts can be taken care with topical retinoids or oral retinoids, but when it comes to veruca vulgaris, periangal warts or genital warts, most of the times we have to do any type of procedure that will remove the wart. It might be radiocautery that we are burning the wart or with CO2 uh, laser. Second one is cryotherapy that we are damaging the wart with freezing technique. At times, we on for genital warts, we apply something known as podophyllin or TCA to take care to denature the wart chemically. We call it chemical cauterization. Or nowadays, for periangal warts and plantar warts, that are warts on hands and feet, we inject a anti cancer drug that is bleomycin in these warts to damage them, to shrink the warts, and eventually they will clear. A new therapy that has been used but is not 100% successful is immunotherapy for warts where we inject vaccines such as MMR etc. in these warts on periangal areas. So the immune mechanism that takes place takes care of what? If you talk uh, that whether we can do something to prevent what, then of course, as I told you, that they are contagious. So whenever you go to a salon, whenever you go to a barber shop, make sure that they are taking care of clean things. Most of the time nowadays, they use disposable stuff. So that should be done. In case you want to increase your immunity, zinc is something that fights the uh, uh, the, the virus that causes these warts. So zinc supplementation is given to protect the uh, male or female who are suffering from warts from future episodes of warts. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Butra. That was really very elaborate and very uh, informative. Um, inf even for me too, that was very interesting and an eye-opener, your answer about warts. So thank you so much. Dr. Manju, over to you. Now a little bit about the cosmetic aspect of skin. Uh, Cosmetic care of skin has become very important and even young girls start taking care of the skin. So tell us about how to start taking care of the skin. At See. young age, at middle age and yes. things that we can do at home and uh, that uh, 
since uh, uh, not only female not only females now males also have also become very conscious of the skin skin so tell us something about that aspect of skin care see dermatology is a disease aspect of surgery and cosmetic dermatology is a desire aspect of surgery. so it's our desire to become presentable to become beautiful to become handsome obviously everyone wants to look handsome and look good because it, it it increases it boosts your confidence so it starts with the lifestyle so what is the lifestyle what we eat uh, what is our daily routine and do we exercise or not so these are the things that should be in uh, our lifestyle like we should eat properly in a balanced diet we should exercise we should practice yoga and timing is very important many people say that Hum to, uh, we take proper sleep or eight of eight hours, but at what time? That is also important. We should sleep on time because our biological clock that works according. So it should match with the sun. So we should go early to bed and early to rise. Then exercise, yoga, balance time. This is the uh, lifestyle we should maintain. Then second comes our daily routine. So what is the daily routine? Cleaning, bathing and uh, uh, sun protection, moisturizers. So these things are very good. So after exercise, take a take shower properly, clean your skin, clean your hairs, then use some uh, moisturizers if your skin is dry. If you have oily skin, then, oil, you, then the person can use oil free moisturizers and moisturize their skin. Then after moisturizing comes the sunscreen. Then if you are going out, uh, apply sunscreen at least half an hour before. So before stepping out, 30 minutes from a prior, apply sunscreen and application to sunscreen full. It should be very liquid. Uh, proper amount should be used 30 minutes prior and sunscreen should be used three to, three to four times daily. It doesn't mean that you have applied once in the morning and uh, your skin is protected throughout the day. No. One should apply sunscreen three times. So it is about the skin and before going to bed, clean your skin, moisturize or if you are in middle age, you can, one can apply some light drops as hydroxy acid or retinol. whatever the yoga metabolism is prescribed. Then comes over the hair. So proper nutrition, balanced diet, that is the most important, means all seasonal foods, proteins, carbohydrates, it should uh, and fat, it should be in balance and all nutrients should be in your diet. Then comes the daily routine, then cleaning, a proper cleaning is proper shampoo. And then if your skin is dry or brushless, uh, then one can use some uh, conditioner. So then, you, then one can use conditioner. This should be daily routine. And if your uh, skin is not much of oily, one can apply some oil as a, as a hair as per ritual. So this is the hair care things. Then, so at most important is daily routine, exercise, balanced diet, and daily cleaning. So these are the things that can maintain their skin with the daily routine. If any problem is there, like any problem, dryness, acne, or any problem, then visit to a dermatologist. Then the, uh, one, can, uh, one should uh, maintain the routine according to your doctor. So doctor advises, dermatologist advises according to your problem. So, you, uh, so the, the most important thing is your daily routine and diet. There's, a, there's an open question to everyone from a viewer. What should be the sequence and essentials on skin application if you are exposed to UV rays most of the time? This is a 25 years female and this is what I was asking about. What should be the sequence and what are the essential uh, ingredients which should be there? Is daily routine care? Yes, daily routine care. So, uh, for a female, for a young female, the daily uh, care should start with the morning. The, uh, the, I, I was talking about the cleaning. Then the cleanser must be appropriate to your skin. So, choosing your cleanser is also important. It should be according to one's skin. If it is oily, then the cleanser should be oil-free. It should be mild. And if the skin is... Uh, dry then one can use a moisturizing cleanser 
means they moisturize the must be in your cleanser and normal uh, then you can choose accordingly and then the moisturization comes first moisturize the skin then application of sunscreen is very important as i was talking about it should be three times day then evening care clean your whatever the dirt and uh, the some moisturizer and sunscreen one has already applied clean your skin after coming from office or from outside it should be clean properly cleanse it properly apply some moisturizer then night cream this is the essential daily routine care thank you thank you so much uh, one question to dr kiran tell us some uh, diseases of the nails because people frequently have problems the nails either they are discolored uh, either they have become thin dr batra has already shown some light on that give us a short cap about the condition of nails and uh, how to improve them okay so i don't know what dr batra said but thank you guys for having me um uh, but i i actually would like to shed a lot of light on the things that we do to our nails that make them damaged um, so what a lot of people do is they actually have, well, let's talk, they wear a lot of nail polish. Everyone's doing nail polish or gel nails or all these acrylic nails. And in fact, that damages the nails significantly. So you'll find your nails will be more brittle, more damaged. You'll get more discoloration. Um, so that is a very, very big issue that we ourselves are creating. Um, the second thing is a lot of people pick their cuticles. They, they pick at them, they rub at them, they bite at them. That causes a lot more paronychia, which is infection around the nail. The third thing is dietary. A lot of people are protein deficient or they're vitamin deficient. Iron deficiency shows up on the nails. Protein deficiency also shows up on the nails. Certain vitamin, again, any mineral deficiency shows up on the nails. So these are the three things that are preventable and treatable and manageable. The last thing, of course, is fungal nail infections. And that is separate. And then obviously there's a whole host of diseases that show up on the nails, which I'm not going to get into because it gets too technical. But let's talk, but the preventable things as we know is diet. So improving your vitamins and protein and mineral intake. Second is nail care. You know, taking nail polish breaks is really important. Um, I actually don't, I, I take a nail polish break every winter, for example, and, and my toenails. I mean, that's a good thing. Or take a month on, month off. Uh, then using nice nail serums, um, strengthening nail serums, Vaseline jelly or any petrolatum jelly is a wonderful agent to help create a barrier for the nails and the cuticle to keep it calm. It's also really cheap and easy, something you can do to well hydrate them. These are these are really big, important, easy things we can do ourselves. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Doc Batra. What about hair transplant? Because now we listen a lot about hair transplant. Tell us something about it. Who should be go, uh, doing uh, who sh for, for whom it would be helpful and not. I think I'll be the last person to uh, tell about hair transplant. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, well, jokes apart. See, hair transplant is just redistribution of your hair. So you take hair from one part of your scalp and you just put it on the other part. So many a times people feel that, uh, and nowadays, of course, we have uh, synthetic fibers that can be used, but people feel that once they have got a hair transplant done, everything will be fine. They don't need to take care. That's wrong. As I told you, what all, if you are suffering from androgenic alopecia, that suggests that what the, all the hair that are falling, say, as I told you, 100 hair falling every day is normal, but they... All of them are not coming back and that's the reason why you are losing your density, why uh, you are losing hair on your scalp. So, of course, we take hair from an area that is known as uh, the donor area, which is not sensitive to the male hormone, the testosterone, that is the damage causing hormone, which is uh, causing this androgenic alopecia. So, hair that we have taken from the donor area can be implanted in your frontal part, but the existing hair in your frontal area need that medicine to make sure that they don't fall. Otherwise, you have seen people who feel that, okay, I got a hair transplant two, three years back, but again, the density has gone. 
So the implanted hair stays, but your original natural hair vanish if you don't take care of them. So if you want hair, medicines can never be stopped, whether you take a PRP session or not, whether you take a hair transplant or not, that's the mantra. If you are taking a hair transplant, you have to first see that you have been diagnosed that you are suffering from androgenic alopecia. Because many a time I have seen patients who are suffering from, as we discussed, alopecia areata getting a hair transplant done. It's not going to do any good. Others who have suffered from conditions uh, such as secretricial alopecia, the disease has to become dormant when you get a hair transplant done. In active secretricial alopecia, you cannot get a hair transplant done. Otherwise, these hair roots will also vanish. So these all things you need to take care. Of course, you need to uh, visit a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon who specializes in hair transplant and then only you should get it done. There are two techniques uh, that are widely uh, practiced. One is uh, the FUE, that is you take single strand at a time and then you implant it. The other one is uh, FUT, that you take a strip, the uh, the team of the hair transplant surgeon will slice, uh, take off all the hair roots that are there and will uh, implant the follicles. Other thing, many a times when patient come to us, feel that, okay, it's my wedding next month and I want a hair transplant done. That's not done. As we discussed about telogen effluvium, so the telogen phase, whenever you get a hair implant, uh, the hair transplant done, all those hair go in a... <clears throat> in a shock. The shock is that because you have plugged them from one area, you have implanted them onto another area. So the hair fall will occur, the implanted hair will fall. New hair growth will start from those follicles after three months. So you will start seeing results as early as six months. So that is the downtime also that is there. So don't think that it's, it's a magic that you go today to a hair transplant surgeon and it's your wedding next month and you'll get a full head of hair. You have to wait for at least six months. So if you are thinking about a hair transplant done, make sure you have six months uh, before that, uh, that day, if it's your marriage or any other important thing. Of course, if you've got done for your own charm, then you can get it anytime. Dr. Rohit, एक तो आज थी आपने उस पे भी पानी फेर दिया। नहीं पैच अवेलेबल है। पैच इज़ ऑलरेडी अवेलेबल। Thank you so much. That was really very elaborate and that was very informative. Really, uh, it was an eye opener for me. So thank you, Dr. Rohit. Thank you, uh, Dr. Manju. How about acne? That is a very common problem in females. Yeah, not only females. Males also often see these days, the males are also coming very often in our clinics. So it is common in both uh, males and female. But obviously females, because they are more worried about their skin and the cause are more intense because hormonal fluctuations are very much intense. So it starts from teenage, most of the teenage uh, girls these days are coming. So they have acne, so in them, uh, the most common cause is hormonal changes and in urban lifestyle, the dietary pattern. So these two things are very important in teenage girls and girls. So because of fluctuation in hormones and uh, diet, that is a very rich diet, carbohydrates, junk foods. So these are very common these days in urban lifestyle. So if the uh, tea in uh, if the patient is at teens, the most important part of counseling is not only uh, the because it is hormonal, dietary counseling is very important. It's, uh, though uh, the treatment is also, uh, treatment also plays a very important role. The treatment may include some uh, antibiotics, topical ap application as retinoid, topical uh, antibiotics. And face washes, a uh, hub uh, is face washer, lactic acid based face washer. But the diet counseling is very good. But if the patient comes in their uh, middle age, then uh, there are many reasons, not only hormonal, then metabolic uh, changes are varying, such as diabetes, cholesterol, and hormonal issues. These three things, these three factors are varying. So we uh, not only we have to write the, uh, the 
acne based treatment, but we have to diagnose also. If the uh, uh, if they have any hormonal issue, we have to correct the hormonal problems. And if there is any metabolic problems such as diabetes, obesity, or any cholesterol problem, or any heart disease, if they have on investigation, we have to treat them accordingly. And obviously, we have to refer them also uh, because mm -hmm. the other doctor, the Physician also plays a very important role. Endocrinologist and and not only in middle age, late ages also uh, the, uh, they are prone for acne. The term uh, changes, then it becomes denial. Okay, so all ages uh, the patients they come to us uh, with acne. So according to age and their problem and their uh, reasons behind it, we treat accordingly. Though the some uh, treatments are common to all, like antibiotic, isotretinoin, topical retinoids, topical uh, antibiotics, face washes, and proper care. But the reason behind it, we have to take care, diagnose, and accordingly treat. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, thank you so much. And but just just like to add here for to my viewers, to our viewers that. Even though uh, you are hearing about the names of these uh, ointments or medications, but it is very important for you to consult a dermatologist, a specialist before starting on any such therapies. Dr. Kiran, are you there? Uh, she is not there probably. Dr. Rohit, I would request yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, okay. you are there. Okay, a uh, few words about PCOD. What do we see on the skin and what should be done about that? PCO, so PCOS, um, yes, PCOS is uh, is something that can present itself in a lot of different ways, right? So you can have excess fit hair on the face or the body, which is something called hirsutism. You can have adult onset acne or acne that's very resistant or difficult. Uh, we can have weight gain, obviously internal things like infertility is separate. Hair thinning as well on the scalp for women. That's a big one as well. These are the, the primary things that we do see in PCOS aesthetically. Uh, they are very often treatable with lifestyle interventions, um, except the excess hair growth, which frankly, you know, laser hair removal. <laughs> but a lot of acne is improved with diet interventions and lifestyle interventions, weight changes. Um, these are things that actually we can do a lot with. And in fact, the first thing that I recommend to PCOS patients or clients is that we change their diets and their lifestyles. And that makes a measurable improvement right there. So that's a, a, that's a, that's my perspective on it. Lifestyle first and then Thank everything so else after that. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Manju, a quick, uh, uh, a quick description of the cosmetic procedures that are done now. See, as uh, I told you, dermatology is the disease, is a science of diseases and cosmetic dermatology is a desire aspect to dermatologists. So, means ki patients are coming with the desire for a cosmetic uh, treatments. So, if they desire to okay, remove my, these kind of layers, if they have some problem like hirsutism, then obviously we remove it, but some patients come with a desire that remove my hair or, or my hands. So, the hair removal becomes important. Obviously, done, it is done with the lasers. And then other problem, the often uh, patients are coming these days, they want glow, glow over the face. So, every uh, one has some kind of skin. And uh, some ha some has exceptionally good glow uh, naturally over the face, but not, uh, this is not common for everybody. So if they don't, if not everybody is blessed with the uh, uh, glowing skin, they come for the glow, for fairer skin, they want to tone better, for pigment removal. So these are the things patients, patients often come to us. So we, we use different procedures like peeling, uh, PRP, lasers, so these are the procedures we do. So, but every uh, laser is different for each and every drug. So, for pigmentation, we use q laser to make tone beta. Uh, even we use, we use uh, q laser, we use peels, 
then uh, if you remove some kind of moles or uh, some kind of other problems, then you use CO2 laser or uh, sometimes you use cautery. And uh, uh, for sagging of skin or for wrinkles, we use different technology like MNRF, microneedly, or we use some lasers, even CO2 lasers. So these are the different procedures we use to enhance the skin, to make better. Even for wrinkles, we use Botox to enhance the face, to make, make che uh, che cheeks, and even to lips fuller, we use fillers. So these are the different procedures. Even for uh, lifting, we use thread lifts. So different procedures for different problems we use these days. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Uh, and. Uh... Especially, I know that you do training for dermatologists, yeah. for doctors also yeah. for these procedures. So I, I wanted you to throw some light on this. Uh, Dr. Rohit, are you there? Yes, uh, you, uh, you've you touched upon nails, but I would request you to give a short cap, cap about uh, what problems people may be feeling on their nails and the reasons for because of which that may happen and what to do about it. Most common cause of uh, nail disorder is fungal infection, which usually occurs uh, not maintaining proper hygiene. If you uh, people are not uh, washing their hands or washing excessively, uh, especially in uh, females, uh, those who wash clothes, uh, utensils. So uh, because of that, so whenever uh, the cuticle gets damaged and the water and soap is going inside. So because of the moisture, the fungal infection, which usually starts at greenish or blackish discoloration of hair, uh, of, of nail starts. For that, we need to uh, give oral as well as topical lacquers containing antifungals. And now one has to take care that a treatment for onychomycosis that we call that's the uh, fungal infection of the nail lasts for around six to nine months. Why? Whatever hair, whatever nail has been damaged is damaged. Whatever new hair, a new nail is coming from the uh, cuticle, from the nail plate, that has to be taken care of by the medicines. So medicines make sure that the fungus is not able to damage the new nail that is growing. So till the time the whole nail gets uh, wiped off of the greenish discoloration, we have to give that medication. Another common thing that is seen in uh, children or those who are starved or uh, those who are suffering from nutritional deficiency is horizontal lines. We call it abuse lines. So uh, this suggests that there was, if you see in the middle of the nail, it suggests that, okay, three to four months back, there was some nutritional deficiency or disease that has resulted in this. So nutritional supplements are given. Then according to age also, there is some damage to the nail plate that uh, they start to becoming uh, become rigid and you see that after 30s or 40s especially in males especially in the toe nails the nail is no more round or uh, convex it starts to become a uh, flat surface rich surface that is because the nutrients the blood supply is not able to reach uh, uh, in these areas as I told you earlier also that in case there is some iron deficiency, then we have spooning of uh, nails that is seen. And in case there is some nutritional deficiency, that is the nail plate becomes thin and it is uh, chipping off from the sides. Uh, that might be the reason. Another very common uh, thing that is seen uh, in this is the ingrow toenail that is very common in children, those uh, especially in those who uh, indulge in activities or females who have a habit of wearing narrow footwear. So that is also seen. And for that, usually we treat with some antibiotics and anti-inflammatory and ask them to wear uh, uh, wide shoes. And otherwise, if it is deep down, the nail has uh, grown inside, then a small surgery is that what we do, we clip the nail, and if still it doesn't work, we uh, remove the nail plate uh, completely, the nail. Thank you. I think uh, we've had a very engaging and, uh, and a very good discussion on all the various uh, topics concerning uh, skin care and all different elements of skin, not just skin, nail and hair. And uh, thank you, Dr. Bhattar, you've, you've thrown uh, 
light on some very important aspects and very beautifully, very elaborately. Now, I'd request all of you to give a small message to our viewers about how to take care of their skin, how to have a healthy skin and a healthy body. Let's start with uh, you, uh, Dr. Kiran, a message to our viewers. Well, I'm a big believer in lifestyle, as you know, so reducing high glycemic foods, avoiding dairy, avoiding processed foods, avoiding artificial sweeteners and whey protein supplements, exercise every day, drink a lot of water. These are big changes that will help prevent the signs of aging. They'll help prevent PCOS. They'll help prevent acne. They'll help prevent any physical thing that you don't like. That, that can happen to you. It'll help with pretty much all of it. So change your life. It'll help you internally and externally. Thank you so much. Dr. Manju, I would also request you to throw some light uh, on herbal uh, remedies or home remedies that we usually, we've been using and might use in your message. Herbal remedies, uh, the most important these is, is green tea and easily available. And the other easily available thing is in our home is Tulsi. So make a Tulsi drink and you can use uh, in a daily routine. And these herbal things makes your life uh, like they, they are full of antioxidants. So these, these two things are easily able. Otherwise, many herbs are in our kitchen like methi, stomp, and uh, uh, these things you one can boil and drink. Uh, they can have with the uh, with the uh, honey. So take these on antioxidant. They are easily available at home, and the uh, lifestyle obviously is very important as Dr. Kiran said. And one should access uh, access not only exercise, practice yoga. This is very important. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Manju, for your message. Uh, Dr. Rohit, uh, over to you, sir. I'm, uh, I hundred percent agree uh, with my learned panelists, Dr. Kiran and Dr. Manju. Uh, the other thing that uh, is a menace nowadays is uh, the social media. So I will request our viewers to go for a uh, proper diet and exercise and don't follow the so-called influencers who themselves are not dermatologists, but preach skin day in and day out. Uh, many a times uh, people come to us, they have applied all sort of home remedies on their face or hair. They burn their face. But when it's a dermatologist or a doctor, you have someone uh, to treat you. But when you go, just watch a reel and then use it on yourself and burn your face, you're not going to get hold of that influencer. So make use of your brains you don't go to a cobbler if you want to get a suit stitch. Similarly, listen to your dermatologist and not to the influencer. We are the authorities. So always listen to the authorities and not the influencers. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much, uh, all the esteemed panelists. I think we had a wonderful discussion today. And uh, one thing which I found common in uh, all the discourses from all of you was the importance of a healthy lifestyle, the importance of a good, good, healthy diet and the importance of a good regimen of physical exercise. So both our diet and our physical activity play a profound role in the outcome of all our health aspects. And one thing obviously, which was added to this was sleep. Sleep is just as important. Uh, as a, a good healthy diet and physical activity. And all this shows up on our skin because skin face is the first thing that we see. So obviously there can be problems on the skin. If you ever see problems on your skin, on your children's skin, or you feel there's something wrong with you on your skin, the first thing you must do is to see a dermatologist. At least a physician who will guide you properly how to go on further. Do not indulge in just home remedies or look up over internet and do Google treatment because at times it can be very harmful. Even applying, uh, continuously applying a steroid cream uh, can just uh, damage your skin irreparably. So it is better not doing this and listen to our esteemed specialists. 
Thank you so much for being with us. I would request uh, Sri Anil Rajput sir to give a word of thanks. Uh, thank you very much uh, for a very engaging and interesting session. And I'm sure <clears throat> all the participants would have enjoyed this. I think one hour is not enough uh, for the subject because it's a very complex issue. And uh, as uh, in the initial phase only, but somebody had mentioned that skin is mirror to your body. So, so you know, uh, everybody has to uh, take care of it. Uh, it's a very vital part of your body. So I'm sure uh, all the participants would have taken copious notes of what our esteemed panel have uh, recommended for them to take good care of their skin. Uh, Dr. Rohit Patra was uh, absolutely excellent in his uh, discourse. And I'm um, uh, sharing this that both Dr. Manju Kesari and Kiran uh, Sethi uh, joined a bit later, uh, but they covered the uh, distance quite well. Uh, in a very short period, they shared their experience and uh, we would like to thank all of them for coming and sharing their thoughts with us. And I'm sure we will have opportunity in future to engage with them uh, for, uh, for our viewers. And I'll also like to thank uh, Dr. Kesri for conducting this session, asking very relevant and probing questions so that uh, our uh, participants could benefit uh, from, from their experience. I'd also like to thank uh, SHM for uh, organizing this session. And I would request that in future, they should perhaps have a session on this particular topic, which is little more than one hour. So with these words, I'd like to uh, include the session and thank you very much for coming here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.